Hi guys, it's Paula and I hope you are doing well. I am doing a get ready with me. It's been a while since I've done one. It's no surprise, get ready with me's are the biggest pain in the butt to edit, but I figured some people really like them and I should stay in the habit of doing them every now and then. So this is a get ready with me. I also had a few requests to demonstrate the eye look that I'm gonna be doing today. So I'm always happy when somebody asks me to do makeup because I'm not a makeup artist. I'm just playing with makeup and it's an honor when somebody likes something I did. It feels like my art is being appreciated because I'm not an artist, but I like to put I like to paint my face every now and then. I thought about just doing the eye look and doing the rest of my face off camera, but I've been switching up my routine so much that I figured, why not? I'll just show you everything that's going on. Uh, so let me scoot you in now before I forget. Are we close enough? I think we are. I'm gonna be starting with this primer. This is the Ren Perfect Canvas Primer. I just recently put this into my hashtag 54321 project created by Elizabeth and it's just a clear liquid like so and I'm gonna put it says one to two drops but I'm gonna go ahead and do more like three or four I very rarely use more than recommended but it, one to two just seems ridiculous I just apply it with my hands all over my face and Initially, my skin feels a little bit tacky, but once it dries down, I wouldn't say it feels tacky. What am I feeling? I don't know. Okay, regardless of what primer I'm using, after I prime my skin, I go in with my color correctors. First, I do the Pixie one, which is for my under eyes. It is the Correction Concentrate in Brightening Peach. And I just kind of paint that under my eyes. Like so. I really uh, want my under eyes to look like I'm 20 years old. I feel like under eyes can be a dead giveaway for age. I mean, there's lots of giveaways on your age once you hit 40, but I feel like if I can conceal my under eyes and make them look flawless, I can convince you I'm five to 10 years younger than I actually am. And then before I blend that out, I'm gonna grab the green color corrector and swipe some of that right here, right here. I don't like to get it too close to the cracks. I mean, I would like to conceal like right there, but if it if I apply it directly to that area first, it kind of stays there and it doesn't get out. So I just do a little swipe under the nose like that and then I blend it out. And if I have any other spots, I might apply some. My skin's finally been clearing up. I've had a series of breakouts over the last couple of weeks. And I have no idea if it's hormones or a product. I had a feeling that it was a product that was irritating my skin, but lately that product has not been irritating my skin. I don't know. And then I just take my ring fingers and blend everything out. So how have you guys been? When was the last time I did a get ready with me? October, maybe? Yeah, I think the Halloween one, right? I think that was, and that wasn't really like a real get ready with me. So maybe September was my last real get ready with me. It's been a long time. Happy New Year, you guys. Happy New Year. I finally caught up on my Instagram. I've been trying to catch up on my Instagram posts since January of 2022. And I finally did it on December 30th or December 31st, like la the last minute. And it has felt so good to be posting Instagram posts in real time. I mean, I felt like such a hack, you guys. But... I was at one point posting posts that were four months old on Instagram. I know a lot of you guys know that. I know a lot of you guys have seen it. Um, but I just really feel like now that I've been doing Instagram for as long as I've been doing Instagram, it's not just a way to communicate. It's not just social media. It It is social media. And I love connecting with you guys. And I love talking to you guys over there. I'm much more active uh, conversationally with you guys over on Instagram than I am here in the comment section, unfortunately. 
and I apologize for that. But in what Instagram has become to me is my life in pictures. And specifically, it's become a tool that I use to organize my, to tell my makeup story, to tell my project panning story. What's coming in, what's going out, what am I using, what's going on with this project. And every picture has significant meaning to me as far as my project panning journey and my makeup buying journey, all these little sub journeys that I'm on. Oh, that's what it's all about for me. And um, so two years ago, when I fell behind on posting my on Instagram, I skipped a lot of content to catch up. And my posts are really slim for that year because it was all about catching up and not falling behind. And so when I fell behind again this year, I just said, nope, we're going to post all the posts we should have posted at that time, but we're going to do it later. And it took forever. It was really a painstaking endeavor at times, but now I can look back at my posts and know that regardless of whether they were posted at the right time, they're all there in chronological order. And it, my story is complete for the last year. And I feel better about that. I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that sounds absolutely insane to some of you, but I don't know. It, it just makes sense to me. Okay. Next, I'm going to apply my NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk on my brow bone. It recently started crumbling a little bit. And so I'm working on the other side, avoiding the crumble, but I just take a swipe, oops, under my brow bone, just like that. That's all I do. It's not much. That's why that pencil has lasted for four years. And then I just kind of lightly blend it out with my fingers again um, to kind of highlight my brow bone area. I don't feel like I have the deepest set eyes in the world. Um, I kind of, I mean, if I had to say, I'd say they're just kind of like normal eyes, but anything that can bring some light to my eye space is what I'm going for. And next I'm going to go in with this BB cream. I just recently put this in my 54321 project pan along with that primer. And I've been working with this for about a week now, and I've really been enjoying it. It's also just a really good color match for me right now. There it is right there. And I just kind of put a swipe on my forehead, on my cheeks. I don't apply much, you guys know. I'm not very heavy handed with the uh, base products. Um, I'd rather have to add more than apply too much. And I was using a brush to blend this in for a while. But recently, I've just been using my fingers and I feel like it works just as good. And it doesn't dirty up a brush. So you can see this BB cream is pretty pigmented. That little bit did spread across my entire forehead. I am using my camera as my mirror. So if I'm not looking at you, that's why. I feel like I could use a little bit more. This product has a really nice scent. Um, I'm not sure what. I'm not sure what the scent is at all. I can't even begin to guess. Something like, I don't know. But despite the fact that I've apparently had this product for five years, which I can't believe, it's still in really good condition. And I feel like, unlike a lot of the BB and CC creams I have, this doesn't leave me like extra glowy. It's not a super illuminating, like greasy, um, product. It gives me a nice like satin finish and I feel like the coverage is pretty good. Of course, I still need to go in with concealer, so I'll do that next. So for concealer, I've been using this brush right here. I'm not sure what brand this is. I want to say it was a crown brush, but I have no idea. I could be totally making that up. 
And I just take a little bit of the uh, remainder of my Edward Best Concealer. I usually just kind of take my pinky finger and roll it around this little blob that got stuck on the lid until the temperature of my skin warms it up a little bit. And I pat that on like the inner half of my under eyes like that. And I do the same thing on the other eye, obviously. I just love this Edward Best Concealer. I have said this before, but I kind of pick and choose what products I dig out of the uh, packaging once I finish the part that was meant to be used. Um, I don't feel the need to dig out the remaining product from every single product I use up, but that one I felt was so good that it was worth it. And I just, even now it's a pain in the butt to use, you know, it's inconvenient, but I still love it. And then I go in with this Mac Studio Finish Concealer. This is in the shade C25 and it's a little bit dark and I'm trying to uh, use up that spot down there that's right between the bottom and the side. <laughs> Not there yet. And then I just kind of take my brush like that and apply it on the outer half. I feel like this is just a shade deeper than the Edward Best Concealer and it doesn't uh, brighten my under eyes as much as I'd like it to. And then of course I sometimes take it like right under my nose for some additional coverage. Boy, these lights really pick up on every imperfection, don't they? And then one more time, I go back in and pat it all out with my ring finger. I'm still using my hands to apply so much of my makeup. It's a habit I can't break. Every time somebody says, I need this brush or that brush, I think about it. And then I'm like, no, that's not me. That's just not how I operate. I like to apply my makeup with my hands. Thank goodness I'm not a makeup artist. I'd have to learn how to use brushes, but just putting stuff on my own face, so it's cool. Okay, now that I've made myself look as white as a ghost, I like to go in with my cream bronzer. We are starting a new year with this Laura Geller cream bronzer. Uh, you guys might remember it was pretty much hard as a rock and I was able to revive it with some setting spray, actually. It worked out really well and I've been enjoying it. It's not the same as it was. It was supposed to be like this very light, fluffy, whipped, moussey consistency. And unfortunately, when it dried out, it lost the moussiness altogether. But it is still usable. It's just like a regular cream now. And I apply a little bit on either side of my cheeks back there. I like the tone of this color uh this bronzer very much it's definitely warming me up but it's not too warm especially in the winter while I'm at my palest and it's got a little bit of rosiness to it and you guys know I like a nice rosy bronzer and then I just kind of attack my forehead Hazel said to me the other day she's like you got a really big space above your eyes mom she said that to me the other day and I'm like are you talking about my forehead and she's like yeah it's really big mom are you okay I'm like, yeah we just come from some people with big heads I don't know what to say leave it to your kids to call out all of your imperfections they are the best at it And then I just do a little bit on my forehead. I was watching a little like reel of JLo applying bronzer. And granted, she's JLo. I'm not going to criticize her. But I can't believe how much bronzer she puts on her face. I was a little bit shocked. This thing would be gone if I were JLo. So that's all I do for the cream bronzer. I'm going to go in with a powder bronzer in just a minute. But I like that. Next, of course, is Cream Blush. Maybelline Dream Bouncy and Peach Satin is around for another year. <sighs> so excited to work on this again. Uh, this was part of the experiment. Who remembers the experiment? Jessica. Jessica. 
had, Jessica and Amanda had this crazy idea of doing something called the experiment a few years ago, where we would test the recommendations for how long it takes to use up makeup and see if we could actually use that makeup up in the year's time that it, the products, that the algorithm claimed we could. And uh, it almost killed me. I might be being a little bit dramatic, but at that time it wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. And this blush was brand new because I wanted to pick a product that had never been used for accuracy and consistency. And I worked on this for that entire year and I did like kind of hit pan, like the pan was lifting up like on the edge. I counted it as pan and then I put it away for a year because I didn't want to look at it again. And um, <clears throat> last year I decided to pick it back up again and I've been using it ever since. It's a really nice color. It's a really nice blush, but I got a lot of cream blushes and I'm ready to move on to something else. Next, I'm going to go in with this Mary Kay liquid illuminator. Um, this has been in my A to Z project all last year. I tried a million ways to use this up, but the one thing I didn't try was using it as an actual like cream highlight or liquid highlighter. And just this week, I started trying it out as a liquid highlight and it works great. It works fine that way. I think the reason I didn't want to use it this way is because I felt like it would take a lot longer to use up as compared to like mixing it in with foundation or things like that, or like using it as a primer. But ultimately, I think the way I like to use this product the best is as like a cream or liquid highlight. It's just too glowy to be mixed in with my foundation. I am unfortunately also panning another cream highlight, which is my e.l.f. shimmer palette. So um, if I really want to pan something, I need to choose one over the other for now. And I think I'm going to stick with the e.l.f. palette. So this is probably going to be taken out of my A to Z project when I... Uh, do the finale and the intro at next update, but I am trying to get some more use out of this until then. Next, I'm going to go in with my Tarte Clay Play Palette. This is the volume two. I've just started working on this in the last couple weeks after hitting pan on my volume one, and I'm using the same shade, which is this one here called Solstice. Yep. To set my under eye concealer. And before I do that, I just kind of like to pat out anything that might have gotten caught in a crease. And now that I have this mirror out, I might start using this mirror. Yeah, nothing's in the crease. Nice. I, I'm starting to feel like, I'm starting to suspect that this powder isn't quite as powdery as the Clay Play Volume 1. I just felt like the second my brush touched the Volume 1, there was so much powder kick up and it's not quite as bad with this palette, maybe because it's newer. But also, I did finally, after a very, very long time, wash all of my makeup brushes, almost all of them. And um, so I'm wondering if maybe it's the clean brush that's not causing as much kick up. It's one or the other. Either this palette is less powdery and has less kick up, or the clean brush is causing less kick up, and I'm not sure which one it is. But this powder is just as good as an under eye setting powder, a brightening powder. There we go. I look 10 years younger, don't I? I should do like Emily Noel and put a picture of me from before I put the makeup on and after. I can tell the difference. Next, I go in with my e.l.f. Loose Mineral Powder. I've been panning this all year long. Initially it was kind of an accident and then once I realized I was actually using it very consistently I actually started trying to finish it and I was hoping it would be gone by inventory time so that I could have one less powder but I'm filming inventory as we speak and it's still here. But I just kind of that's why I like this container because this cap is perfect for just dumping some powder and doing the swirl thing. And this brush is a Morphe G7. I think I bought it off of Holt Look a while ago. 
Okay, for bronzer, I'm gonna go ahead and use my mixture that I've made using Bare Minerals Warmth, Bare Minerals Pure Radiance, and a little bit of that same foundation powder from e.l.f. that I just used to set my face. And that is what it looks like right there. And I just take this e.l.f. I think this is called a complexion brush. I love it. It's my favorite bronzer brush ever. I've been using it for years. And I'm just gonna do a little tap. I can't really swirl it in this lid, but that's how much I picked up. It's not much. And I just kind of hit that same spot where I put the cream bronzer. So my, my winter break is about to be over. It is Friday the six. I'm not sure when this video is going to be going up, but I'm trying to film as much as I can today because tomorrow's Saturday and everybody will be home, my husband and my kids, which means I can't film. It's not as convenient. I can still film. My husband spends a lot of time upstairs and my kids, you know, are used to me filming with them around. Ron's actually right over there on the couch. Hazel's at the babysitter's playing with a friend. And, um, but today's a good day for doing as much filming as I can. And I'm hoping that I can keep the flow going of videos even once I go back to work on Monday if all I have to do is edit and post them if they're already filmed. Um, Ron and Hazel, I think I've talked about this, I'm not sure, but Ron and Hazel have been on, Ron's on the swim team and Hazel's taking swim lessons. And basically I am at my local high school pool from 6 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. almost every night of the week. And I just don't have as much time to do anything anymore. I don't have time to clean. I don't have time to film. I don't have time to edit. And so I've really, really been enjoying this two-week break. Uh, I worked until December 23rd, which was hectic because I was hosting Christmas. And that was crazy. But, you know, I got it done. I hosted Christmas. And I felt like I've had like a two-week vacation. And it has been so lovely. I haven't been as productive as I hoped, but I never am. I'm never as productive as I hope I'm going to be. That's just me. But I do feel well rested and I feel like I was able to accomplish some good things as far as like getting stuff done around the house, but I also feel like I was able to do some creative things with, you know, Instagram and I had a lot of, I made a lot of reels, basically. I made a lot of Instagram reels. <laughs> That's how I used my creative energy. For blush, I'm, I'm not at the moment panning a powder blush. I need to, um, I need to get one in a project soon. I did have one in project 10 uses, but I hit my 10 use goal on that. So ever since then, I have been, um, just playing around with the blush from this Clay Play Volume 2 palette because it's just a really pretty shade. It's pretty pigmented. But so was the Lorac one. It's very, actually very similar to the Lorac one that was in Project 10 uses, or technically is. My update for that needs to go up tomorrow. I'm actually gonna film that update as soon as I get done with this. But yeah, it's just a really pretty pinky shade and I put a little bit on my forehead with whatever's left on the brush. I feel like I'm really washed out and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, for highlighter, I actually have not been using my Laura uh, Laura Mercier highlight as much. I've been trying to hit pan on the purpley shade of highlight in this sleek palette right here. No, yes, right here, this one. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to my cheeks. It's very very bright and I kind of love it. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror like hours later when I'm coming out of the bathroom and I'm like, whoa, what is wrong with my face? I'm glowing. I feel like I got a hair right here. But overall, I just think it's really pretty and really bright. You see it? See how bright it is? It'd be really cool if I hit pan today on camera, wouldn't it? 
This brush is a Morphe M501. I've been using this as my highlighter brush for years. Okay, before we get on to the eyeshadow, I'm going to do my brows. I'm still doing the same thing I was doing all of last year, which is applying my ABH Brow Wiz, then going in with the brown shadow from my e.l.f. 100 pan palette, and then topping that off with my uh, clear brow gel from ABH. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to keep going on with this routine until this pencil is gone, and that is all I have left. So this routine is going to change up in about a week or so. I have this like bald spot right there and I don't know how that came to be. I don't think I have alopecia, but I don't remember plucking that spot in my eyebrow because why would I? But for some reason, that bald spot right there is the reason I need to do anything at all to my brows because if it wasn't for that, I really could probably get away with nothing on my brows. Me and my weird bald spots. Not gone yet. Now the powder from my e.l.f. 100 pan palette. This brush I'm using is the Brow Gal by Tanya Crooks brush. I got this in my, my uh, in an Ipsy Glam bag years and years ago. And I feel like the uh, width of this brush is exactly the width I want my brows to be. I'm sure that was done by design, but I feel like it was done for me personally. Like nobody else wants their brows to be this wide except for me. That's silly. This brown is a little bit warm, but when you're panning an eyeshadow as a brow powder, you make it work. And then I'm gonna go in with the remainder of product in my brow gel. There's not a whole lot left in here. I've been using it for months and months and months. And I just kind of uh, use it. I don't have a huge problem with my brows going every which way. They're not the craziest brows but I feel like it helps everything to blend together. And I mean, I don't know if I'm looking for hold or not, but I kind of like the way it feels when this is on. Somebody suggested that I use my old hairspray as brow gel and I'm trying, I'm very into that idea because I have a lot of hairspray and I'm not gonna use it all up in my hair. And um, I'm trying to decide, do I wanna just like pour the hairspray directly in here and use it like a brow gel? Or do I wanna like take this wand and spray it with hairspray? If you have any thoughts about how I should do that, let me know. Okay, the first step I do for this eye look is I apply an eye base. This is the Milani Shadow Eyes in the shade Royal Purple. This has been in Project 10 Uses. I've also hit my 10 use goal on this by now, and it will be rolling out of that project at the next update, which will have already happened by the time you're watching this. But I find that when I'm trying to pan a blue eyeshadow, which I'm not a big fan of, I love it better when it's on top of a purple eyeshadow base. And I've I've gotten to the point where I feel like I'm I know how to use this product. When I first started working on it, I was having a lot of troubles. It was super patchy, but this brush has helped me out a lot. This is a Real Techniques brush. It came from the eye set. It's called 308 Medium Shadow Brush. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of purple on the end and I use this to kind of blend out the edges. So let's get to it.
So I think you could see that that's kind of a patchy situation, but I just take this brush. It doesn't need to be perfect because I'm going to put a bunch of eyeshadows on top, but I feel like if I take this blush and just kind of brush and just kind of blend out the edges, uh, I have a better starting point. And it, it kind of creates a nice uh, crease color too if I blend it out into my crease. And then sometimes I go back in and I apply a little bit more. But it actually looks pretty even. I don't need it to be like a full-on opaque application because, like I said, this is just a base. I'm going to apply a bunch of stuff on top of it. But yeah. Since I started using this blush, brush, goodness, to blend it out, I've been liking this product a lot more. Um, I suppose I could put this pencil into a project for 2023 to pan alongside that blue eyeshadow, but I don't know. I haven't committed to that yet. Blend, blend, blend. I don't know if you could see how splotchy that is right there, but it's super splotchy. Hopefully the eyeshadow will cover all of that up. I have no idea if these Milani pencils are still being sold in stores. I doubt it because I've had this for a long time, but um, I have used many, although I appreciate this color, I think this is a really nice color and somewhat unique. I feel like I have a lot of other purple eye bases that I prefer over this one. This just is not a fave. But that is all I do for my eye base. I have a nice starting point to apply a bunch of blue eyeshadow on top of it. But first, I'm gonna go back in to my e.l.f. 100 pan palette. I am having the hardest time figuring out where top and bottom is on this palette these days. I'm gonna go into the shade right here, which is the shade I like to use as my brow bone highlight. And I'm gonna go in with my little Sonia Kashuk brush, which I love. I usually apply my brow bone highlight before I do my brows, but hopefully I don't get a bunch of powder up in my brows. Okay, next I'm going to jump in with this eyeliner. This is my Jante Blue eyeliner in electric blue. And I'm going to apply that to my upper and lower lash line. I don't know if I really need it on my upper lash line, but I got to use this entire pencil up. And it just made it into my Project Pan Roast for 2022. So you know I'm going to use this up. I'm going to try and use this up this year. I'm going to make an effort. But I don't put this in my waterline because it just wears away right away. So I just kind of go on the edge outside of my waterline and apply it right at like my lash line. I wish this stayed in my waterline, it would be great. I think I would have a better chance of using this up if it did. I love a pop of blue in the waterline. But this isn't that kind of pencil. That's fun. I think I'm due for a sharpen finally. Next, I'm going to go in with this Makeup Geek Soft Dome Brush. And I'm going to jump into this pink shade right here and apply that to my crease and transition area and kind of blend over where that purple base got blended out. Like right there.
And then I take this smaller brush, which is called the Small Crease Brush from Makeup Geek, and I apply that to my lower lash line underneath the blue eyeliner. Okay, we're not quite done with my e.l.f. 100 pan palette, but next we're gonna go in with the blue. And I'm gonna take, this is Pool Party, by the way, from Sephora. This is in my Do Japan My Battleship project. It also just made it into my 2022 Project Pan Roast because all I need to do is hit pan on this and I can't do it. And I'm gonna take another Makeup Geek brush. This is a pointed crease brush. I like this and it's already been stained blue, so I just keep using it over and over again. And I'm going to put this on like the outer half, two thirds of my eyelid. Okay, that is about all I do with the blue eyeshadow, unfortunately, and still no pan. I'll keep at it, you guys, I promise. One day, one day I'll have pan. Next, I go back into my e.l.f. 100 pan palette one more time with this icy blue shade up here, and I apply, and I apply that to the inner half of my eyelid. I have been having a lot of trouble with hard pan on this eyeshadow, um, so I, so I often have to scrape up the top layer and then use that loose, which works really well. But that's why that shadow looks so mottled and banged up because I often scrape it. Um, I think the reason it got hard pan is because I like to apply this shade with my finger. So I have been starting out with this brush. This is another Real Techniques brush. It's called the Instapop Crease Brush. And I apply uh, this initially with the brush especially around this area to kind of make sure I get a neat application because my ring finger is way bigger than that part of my eyelid. And if I only use my ring finger, it inevitably, it inevitably always goes above where I want it to go. But this doesn't give me quite as much pigment as if I use my finger. So I start with the brush and then I move to my finger. And I definitely do some overlapping onto where the dark blue is. Okay, finally, I'm gonna go back in with my Sleek Solstice palette, that purpley shade I'm trying to hit pan on, and I'm going to apply that to my inner corner with my Sonia Kashuk brush. Normally, I would use my ColourPop Koosh, but since I've been trying to hit pan on this Sonia Kashuk powder, I've been using this, or this Sleek powder, I've been using this Plus it's kind of fun to have this super bright purple shade. It is just so brightening on my inner corner. I really like it. I mean, the Koosh is really, the Koosh shadow is really brightening too, but this is like otherworldly brightening. And then the final thing I do with my eyes is I take a little bit of this black eyeliner. This is the Laura Geller Incredible Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. It is one of my new favorite eyeliners ever. And I apply it to my waterline because this really does do a, a good job of staying put. Nothing really stays put in my waterline for too long, but this is pretty, this is one that I consider to be worth the time.
I just love a black waterline. Okay, I am going to apply some setting spray and some mascara and I will be right back and we will talk about what lip product I am putting on my lips for this look. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. My hair is down, my mascara is on, my face has been sprayed with setting spray and I'm ready to talk about lips. I've pulled this combo. This is just a nice pinky combo that I've been enjoying. I have my Jordana lip liner in Baby Berry. And then I'm gonna to top it off with this Neutrogena Moisture Smooth Color Stick in Sweet Watermelon. I'm not crazy about this shade on its own. It's kind of like a frosty pink shade that reminds me of the 80s. But on top of this lip liner, I find it to be much more quote unquote wearable. And that's it. This is the final look, you guys. I love it. I actually like it. I can't believe I found a way to incorporate that blue eyeshadow in a way that I like. I guess it shouldn't be that surprising that the way I found to make it work is to kind of incorporate it with pinks and purples. I really love pinks and purples and I find this to be a, a really good solution. But I really think the shadow that makes this look work is that light blue from my elf 100 pan palette and that is such a shock because overall i don't feel like the strength in my elf 100 pan palette palette is the shadow's ability to pop but i feel like that light blue shadow with this eye look is electric and i just love it and i'm really looking forward to uh continuing on with this look in order to until until one day i finally hit pan on that blue eyeshadow Hopefully it won't be too long. Let me scoot you back a little bit so you're not so close to my face. I do have somewhere to go tonight, maybe. Either I'm gonna take my kids to swim, either I'm gonna take my son to swim practice or I'm gonna go to a surprise birthday party. I'm not sure, it all depends on what time my husband gets home. But either way, this makeup isn't going to waste today. I'm really glad I had a chance to do this look. And if, for those of you that requested this look, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. But that is going to be it for this Get Ready With Me. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.